Hey, what's up my fellow internet fashion nerds? Oh, it's uh, It's another two-week extension to our lockdown here in Malaysia. So I guess that means more time to do what we do best, like shit post on FA, lowball suckers on Grilled, create shitty memes, and record lame product review videos like the one you're watching right now. Actually, the reason why I wanted to create videos like these, apart from having a lot more time right now, is because I feel like there's not enough content out there, uh, especially on avant-garde fashion. Regardless whether it's CCP, BBS, or MA Cross or whatever, uh, there is usually a lot of intent behind the purchases and a lot of interest behind these brands, but there's not a lot of information out there to help people make informed buying decisions, uh, especially when there's a, such a high cost involved. And another thing as well, uh, living in a place like Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, where there really is not very much of a community for avant-garde fashion over here, and there are absolutely no stores at all, even worse if you're living somewhere like in Bamfuck, Indiana, um, there is really no one to talk to, uh, and all you have is just internet fashion nerds like you guys. Uh, so it's kind of hard to pull the trigger just based on photos alone. I also didn't want to make lengthy history of the brand videos. Um, I think better YouTubers have done it already. People like Karsten Krenik, um, David Mozier have made excellent videos about the CCP brand for instance. I wanted to make my videos more focused on the product itself. So like the, the tech specs, the uh, how the leather is made, the construction and of course the fit. So today I'm talking about the Carl Christian Pohl vest bag. Uh, I know it's a grail for many people um, and it's one of the key pieces ever produced by CCP. There are a few variations of it. Uh, this one is in black kangaroo leather and it's the Parker shoot version uh, produced exclusively for Samsaji Tooth Varen. You can see that the design of the vest bag is based on old life preserver vest designs where they would put the styrofoam flotation uh, pieces into these panels and uh, the front as well as the back but now instead of preserving your life uh, they preserve your virginity because you're not getting laid dressed like this um, inside these front panels also are these pockets, zip pockets uh, very handy so they also help to preserve your keys for instance you can put your wallet, power bank, pocket X, your cat. Now I say preserve also because kangaroo hide is one of the most durable uh, leathers in the world. I want to talk more about this in a future video about leathers. Uh, I might bring in a couple of friends who know a bit more about leathers than I do. But I also say preserve because it smells a bit like preserved fish, like like ikan bilis or like sambal or something. And you can see that the grain of kangaroo leather is pretty different, it's pretty unique. And the hardware also, it's oxidized metal. Now about the parka shoot, Samsaji had these special um, kite S pieces made uh, especially just for them. So they've got like the leather jackets like the scar stitch and the high necks, uh, but with like a ripstop parachute fabric lining that you could turn it inside out and it will protect your leathers from the rain. So it looks like this and for the vest back, it's actually hidden in the back panel. See it's an amazing, quite an amazing fabric actually. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. You see that? So this is ripstop fabric. It's pretty much the same fabric they, they use on parachutes, so it's super resistant. It's waterproof, it's got kit seams. And Puff sleeves, which are typical for CCP parkas. It's also super noisy. And the hood can be tightened with what appears to be the same kind of laces that they use on the older CCP footwear. See that? Okay. 
The downside, of course, is that it's completely unfucking breathable, which is perfect for our 30 degree humid weather in Malaysia. And that's why the tag is still attached. I haven't actually worn it outside, but let's see what it looks like on the body. And as you can imagine, it's also damn cheap by difficult to store it back into the vest bag. As for sizing, um, vest bags typically fit a bit large. So I wear like a 46 or 48 in CCP. So usually I should be getting like a 44 or 46 in vest bags. But because of this special piece, the parka is actually non-detachable, it's, it's fixed into the vest bag. The parkas actually fit a bit true to size. And there were only two ever made in 48 and 50. And I couldn't get the 48, so I had to get the 50. Even though it doesn't quite fit me. And let me show you why. It's because I'm a sucker for things like this. Literally only two pieces were ever made, one in 48 and one in 50. It's the rarest piece I own. Uh, so even though it's a, it's a bit large I'll, and I'll probably never wear the parka outside, it's still one of the top three grill pieces that I own. It's versatile, it's utilitarian, and it's super fucking rare. Lah. And the sad thing is that nobody is gonna care or give a shit about it. No one's gonna appreciate it, except, I guess, well, except you fashion nerds out there also. Lah.